Hi this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's look at Apple's new Freeform app. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So Freeform is a new app from Apple that you can find in macOS Ventura 13.1 iOS and iPad OS 16.2. We're going to look at it on all three of those platforms starting with the Mac. So let's launch Freeform here and when you first do you'll probably get a welcome screen and after that you'll see a blank canvas that is your first board. Documents in Freeform are called boards and they're basically a blank canvas with no edges and you can add various elements to them. If you go up a level by clicking the left arrow next to the name of the board you go to a screen that will show you all of your boards in a grid or list view. And you also see a left sidebar here that allows you to view all your boards, just the recent shared boards or favorites. You can also search your boards for text that's found in them. And just double click on any board to go into it. By default you get this grid view with these grid dots. But you could go to View and you can hide the grid if you'd rather not have those. Let's look at some of the elements you can add. From left to right you start with sticky notes. And these look like little post-it notes that you could place wherever you want on the board. And you could drag the corners to change the size. You could double click inside and you could write something there. And then you'll see controls underneath while you have text selected. So you could you know, make the text bold or italic. You could center it or left justify it. You can create bullet lists. You can change the size. And for more you can go to Format and then you've got a full set of font controls and text controls. You even go to Show Fonts here and bring up the regular font controls for the Mac so you can do things like for instance change the color of the text. Without text selected I can just click to select the actual note itself and I can select from a variety of sticky note colors. You can't set any color you want, only these. You can also drag this around and position it where you want. Resize of course and you can rotate. If you hold the pointer over a corner and hold down the Command key you could grab it and rotate. And you'll be able to do similar things with all the elements here. Next you've got Shapes. And you have a lot more than just the basic shapes here. In fact you have all the shapes available in Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. So you can select from a whole variety of different things. And you could add a shape just by clicking on it drag it around, resize it. Any shape can have text inside it so you can double click it and there will be a blinking text cursor in there. You can also select it just by itself and you can click here to change the color. You can choose from some basic colors or no fill but you could also click here and choose any color from the color picker. This next button here allows you to set a border. So you can set a border for the entire shape. You can set the thickness for the border and you could set a color for the border as well. And then like with stickies you can grab a corner and resize. You can hold Command and rotate. You also have the ability to copy and paste styles. So I can create another shape here. Let's do this and let's say I want to copy this style right here. I can go to Format, Copy Style, select this one and go to Format and Paste Style. You can also select a shape or other element and go to Format, Save as Insert Style. And When you do this style will be used the next time you create a new shape. Note that under Shapes here you also have some lines and arrows that you can add. So I can select this arrow here and I can change the end. I can change the thickness and then drag the ends to wherever I want. On the Mac there's no way to simply draw shapes but you can click here and then use the Pen Tool and then you can draw a shape using straight lines or drag to curve a line. This is the same tool that's available in Pages, Numbers, and Keynote. Next we have Text. You can select text right there and it's just a text box. And you could put something in the text here. You have text controls here. You can select just some of the text and change just that text right there. You can change colors as well. You have the full font controls if you want for text. You could also select the text, drag it around, drag a corner to enlarge it and hold Command down to rotate it as well. Next we have Media. and You can insert photos and videos. Photos from your library. 
Say so select a photo. Click Add. You have the photo in here. Notice it has little rounded corners. You could turn that off under Format, Rounded Corners, and Shadow as well. You could turn that off. You could change the size. Underneath you can click here to crop and you have the same kind of cropping tools that you do in say Pages, Numbers, and Keynote as well. And you could also grab a corner here to resize. Command and drag will allow you to change the rotation and you can place it where you want. You can also mask an image in a shape by going to Format and then Image Mask with Shape. So I can mask this inside of an oval for instance. You also have other options in here like the ability to take a photo, scan documents, or add a sketch from your iPhone or iPad if they're nearby or connected. You can also add the links. So here you can just type a link to a website and insert and you get a link that looks like this. You can resize it and it will try to adjust. When you select it you should get some controls at the bottom so you should be able to change the link if you want. You can click here to actually go to that page. Note you can also go to Arrange Constraint Proportions and turn that off. This works for images and shapes as well. Now you can resize it as you want. You can also add a link to a file here. So you can click there, select say a regular file like this and it will add it there just like a regular link to a web page. But this will actually go to that document. You can also select multiple items by dragging like that and change multiple items at the same time. So I can add a border around all of these at the same time. You also have a lot of arrangement tools. I can select all of those and go to Arrange and I can align objects say to the center or distribute them vertically like that and then horizontally as well. So in the iPad it looks very similar except that you have one additional tool and that's the drawing tool. Tap on the pen at the top and now you have all the drawing tools here. Now if you have an Apple Pencil of course then it's ideal. You can draw with the Apple Pencil as long as you choose one of these drawing tools here and you can just draw whatever you want. It won't do the thing where like in Notes where you can draw a circle and then wait and it will make a perfect circle. It doesn't have that feature unfortunately. But you can use a variety of different tools like a highlighting tool, uh, an erasing tool, a selection tool and it will select these objects. You could also go to the Writing Mode with the Apple Pencil and then Write. If you'd rather draw with your finger you've got the option right here to turn on or off Draw with Finger. And you've got you know keyboard, font tools, dictation tools and the like here at the bottom as well. The rest works pretty much the same. For instance I can create a sticky note like this and I can drag the corner to resize it. I can use two fingers on the screen and rotate like that. I've got the same shape tools here. I have the same tools for adding text boxes and for inserting pictures or taking a picture with my camera or scanning from the camera or adding a link or a link to a file. And of course whatever device you're using all of your boards here at the top level and Freeform should sync with iCloud. Although note that by default Freeform seems to be off in iCloud settings. Not sure why that is. Maybe just for the first version here. So go into your iCloud settings on Mac, iPad, and iPhone to turn on iCloud syncing. And then you'll see all of your boards across all your devices just like you see all your notes in the Notes app across all devices. So on the iPhone of course you've got the smallest screen that you're going to be able to use this on. So there are a lot of compromises to be made here. For instance when you add an element like a sticky note and you select it notice that your menu items here appear at the bottom of the screen and not underneath it. You of course have all the drawing tools but you're drawing with your finger. There's no Apple Pencil of course. But in general it's more or less very similar to the iPad version. So Freeform is not meant to be a document creation app. Pages, Numbers, in Keynote will do all of that better. You have more precision, more control over the elements and be able to create PDFs, printed documents, images, all sorts of things in a much better way. Freeform is meant to be simple with easy to use tools. It lacks a lot of advanced options so we use it maybe to gather ideas and to share ideas rather than to create a finished product of some sort. For instance say you were going to go on a trip soon and you wanted to get some ideas for places to visit where you're going. So you could easily put some images and text into a document. Say let's go to a web page here and you could drag images into 
the document very easily like that. Once they're in there you can easily arrange these. You can see how they snap to a nice grid like that. You could add some text to it. Place that where you want. Add a shape. Add some sticky notes. Big part of this is collaboration. So the idea is that instead of working on this document by yourself, you would use the share button right here and you would invite somebody else to work with you on this. So now two people are working on the same document. If I were to add some more text here, then the other person would see that change. And if I were to change something in this document, then I would see that change reflected over here as well. And you can add multiple other people. When you go into the settings here, you can go to Manage Shared Board and you can actually change the permissions to anybody with a link and you can also set it to View Only if you like. So you can make changes but they can just view. There's also some export options. You can go to File and then Export as PDF and that's the only direct option right there to create a PDF which is nice because it will keep all the nice curves of all the shapes and lines and things that you add. Also you can go to Print if you want and in addition to regular printing you can use the PDF option here to open in Preview. From Preview you can actually export as an image say. Now where Freeform falls on the spectrum of Apple Apps is really hard to say because it overlaps quite a bit with Note. You can do most of this with Note. You can share a Note. You could add just about the same elements in Notes. And Notes of course has this background body text that you can use. So Notes is better for things like taking notes in meetings and in classes. And you can still sketch on your iPhone or iPad and you can still add images and all sorts of things. On the other hand, Pages, Numbers, and Keynote are better for creating documents. You have more control over what you're adding and what elements look like and where they're placed. And of course you can collaborate with all of those. So Freeform really is all about making it simple. After you try out Freeform I'm interested to hear in the comments how you like it and what things you may use it for. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.